My name's Tom Nudlam. I'm uh, the director of short film Rule Number no. 3, which is representing Enfield in the Film London Best of Boroughs Awards. Okay, the origins of Rule Number no. 3 itself uh, began in, uh, I'd say, late September, early October. And the funding for the North London Film Partnership came up. And myself and my producer, James Cotton, we started our company earlier in the year, we said, right, we want to make a film by the end of the year. And this funding scheme came up, and so we were bandying ideas about. And we felt that we've watched a lot of short films, and the best ones centre on a central conceit, an idea that's very simple. And one of the ways that we could do that was around a board game. And the Scrabble element was is perfectly cinematic because it's visual, you're reading the words, it's all through expression, you don't have to talk, it's all through the words that are conveyed to move the story forward, in the sense that, say, Alfred Hitchcock's Rear Window is a similar thing where you, he looks one way and you get the shot next. It's a similar thing, very, very, um, it's a viewing experience. And so we basically developed the script, James wrote it originally, and we applied for funding. Fortunately, they liked the idea, and, and then the interview, there's <laughs> a story in itself. Um, when we were, so the funding scheme, I had to go to a workshop day, which went great, and then we got called for this interview two days later. And I was working on X-Men at the time. And I couldn't really get the time off work to go. So the night before, I was calling up saying, look, can I, get, can I get any way to be either late, another day, you know, first thing in the morning, try and work around it. And they said to me, you're basically, if you don't turn up, you've kind of ruled yourself out of funding. So pretty distraught and down, I thought, right, I've got to save my project one way or the other. And so that evening, uh, I found an old Scrabble box. I cleared it out, put in the original script, uh, the application that we put in, documents that we'd done since we'd applied. And then I handed it into the Enfield Civic Centre where they were doing the interviews. That first thing in the morning, this was like at four o'clock in the morning, something ridiculous. Gave it to a security guard thinking, I'm never gonna see this again. <laughs> but credit to him, he put it in the room, so the first thing that the funders saw was the box, which then made, I'm guessing they, well, they obviously opened it. Unfortunately, then the next day they called me and said, we thought your presentation was really good and we want to give you a second interview, which is amazing because that was a, a shot at nothing there. You know, that could have just fallen flat on my face, but I felt that I had to do that because the time that myself and James had invested in it, and we were so passionate about it, and we knew that it would be really good, was that you have to save it. James wrote the script and was the real driving force behind it. Um, it was his um, original idea and he, um, he put the time in developing character backstories and whatnot. The actual funding stipulation was that we only had one day to shoot it, which was pretty <laughs> daunting, uh, to be honest. But it also helped because you had then had 11 hours to get it all in the can. And so it was a case of, right, let's just get it, get moving. If we've got it, brilliant, we've got it. Fortunately, because we had two tremendous actors, their talent is such where you can tell them stuff, little notes and hints, and they'll take that on board and do that in the next take exactly as you wanted it, which is amazing. And to be honest, without the two actors that we had, it wouldn't have been half as interesting or hopefully good a film as, uh, as, uh, as it's turned out. So yeah, 11 hours, it was, it was mad, but we got it done. Getting Nicholas Holt into the film uh, was part fortunate, but also another instance of just trying your luck, basically. As I said earlier, I was working on X-Men at the end of last year, uh, and the team that I was working with was dealing specifically with his character in the film. So I was able to you know, build up a bond with him, albeit professional 
you know, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was friendship at that stage, but we knew each other and we, you know, we had chats and stuff. And so when we got the funding, both James and I were talking about casting and I just went to him, why don't we just ask him? Because he's a really nice guy as well, which helped. If he was somebody who was a bit difficult, I don't think I would have had the, the uh, bravado to, uh, to ask him. So I wrote him a letter uh, and dropped it into his trailer with, for the attention of Nicholas Hall, so it looked important. <laughs> uh, so he would actually read it. So it could have been from a producer, albeit it was me. And so he read it and sent me a text pretty much instantly saying, hi, I want to read it. Because I only asked him at that stage whether you'd like to read it. And so that was great. And then handed him a copy of the script. And he sent me another text back saying, read it, want to be a part of it. And it was one of those where he's just like, that's that was kind of, uh, <laughs> that was easier than I thought it would be. And, um, and so once we had him on board, I was then in touch with different producers and casting agents about getting an actress. And once we had him on board, we wanted somebody who was of a similar level. Because without anybody who was on his par, it wouldn't have worked because the film is a battle between the two. And so therefore, if you've got one talented actor, you need another talented actor to juxtapose. So I made a list of the actors who I, actresses who I envisaged and Imogen Poots was top of the list. And when I was caught talking with the casting director, she said, I read it, yes, Imogen's the first choice who I would go for. So I was already on the right call. And Nick sent me an email from Georgia where they were shooting on X-Men, I wasn't out there, saying, hi mate, really love the script. Do you mind if I send it to my friend, Imogen Poots? And I was just like, this, that was the first email I had that day. I was just like, for the next half an hour, yeah. I kind of did a bit of a victory dance. And, um, and yeah, he, Nick was incredibly instrumental in getting her in because he wanted her in it. Again, because he liked the project so much, he knew that he wanted somebody who was equally talented. He's a big fan of hers and she's tremendous in the film. And so he was able to basically be our, um, our liaison with her, which was incredible of him. And both of them are terrific. They're wonderful people and I'm delighted. Still pinching myself, to be honest. If the films are good enough, there's a, there's a jury award. And so you're hoping that all, all the films will be judged on the merits of what they are. And I think rather than... I think the good thing with our film is that, aside from having these two tremendous actors, the actual film itself lives up to the hype, I, I would hope. Because the worst thing would be, and a lot of my friends have said this, is that, yeah, of course we'll vote for you, but actually watching it, I wanted it to be good. And everybody so far has come back saying, we really, really enjoy the film. And I think you've got to, once you've got those type of people involved, you've got to be at the top of your game and try as hard as you can to do, to make the best film you can. And I'm just hoping that people out there are, appreciate that it's an enjoyable film, it's 10 minutes of your life, <laughs> and that, you know, they actually think, oh, it's actually quite good.